Hey guys, welcome back to the Girlfriends and Goals podcast YouTube channel. My name is Samaria and I'm here with my best friend and co-host Miosha. And tonight we're reviewing Married at First Sight season 15, episode seven. But before we get into that, guys, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free and it helps our channel. We're trying to reach a goal of 1000. So if you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and do that for us. All right, so we're going to start with Lindy and Miguel because there wasn't too much with them, uh, this episode at least. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I have for Miguel, everything doesn't need to be said. Like, Lindy, she's literally begging, like, don't tell me, you know? Poor girl is triggered, literally. And it's, I mean, I get it. Yes, some things are better left unsaid, but if those are his sentiments... I'm not saying that he should be saying them, but <laughs> I don't know that it's going to change the outcome as much. Mm -hmm. It's almost like she just kind of would rather be in the moment. And I get that, like enjoy the ride and not be so like doomsday, D-Day. <laughs> yeah, because it seems like she's saying, okay, if we have any type of friction and in that moment, you're not feeling great. I don't think I want to hear you jumping towards, okay, well, this is just eight weeks, so it's fine, or, you know, something like that, because those moments will happen, and I liked how she articulated herself, where she's like, um, pretty much, it puts pressure on me, because mm -hmm. now I'm trying to overcompensate and be like, okay, well, is he going to leave him for this? What should I do to fix it? What should I, you know, and nobody wants that type of pressure, so I like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he was receptive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he kind of came around, I guess the meeting in the middle was, oh, we'll change the name of it, but yeah. I still feel the same. Um, I liked what she said about, you know, being in love or feeling in love, and that's not to change how he feels, but I agreed with her in that, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs, different types of emotions that will occur throughout the course of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you're just going solely off of your feelings, you may feel one way today and then feel one way tomorrow. But I think maybe also what she's trying to articulate, but maybe she isn't, is that it's okay to want to feel in love, but it's also a choice that you're maybe yes. waking up to decide like, hey, I'm going to be all in and give it my all Regardless. versus right versus being checked out because it it's interesting at the altar he said he was looking for a reason so i think he's just like a <laughs> super skeptic and it seems like she was like even if i'm not attracted to this person i'm willing to try so i think she came in with a different mindset than he did and so oh yeah that i feel like a, the mindset right for this type of show Exactly. I mean, I don't know how you go on married at first sight and then you come in looking for a reason. Look, Miguel, it's great that you know how to cook and yeah. you're a doctor and all these things, but this woman is willing to accept you jumping out of nowhere with these costumes and all this play and she lets you fully be yourself and you're saying like, hey, I've never had that before. Mm -hmm. I feel like he might end up being one of those people that Pastor Kyle says like, oh, you might be in love before you say it because you're like checking all the boxes, but you just, for whatever reason, can't bring yourself to say it. Yeah. So, but you're feeling and doing all the things that encompass it. Right Wilson. now he's giving self-sabotage. <laughs> That's what he's giving. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. so uh, it's interesting that he's like, oh, but she won me over. I thought it was interesting that last episode, she ended the dinner saying oh that's us and we're okay with it when she clearly wasn't okay with it so now that they were alone and we knew this all along we knew mm -hmm. she wasn't okay with it but now that they were alone she expressed um uh, that she was uncomfortable with mm -hmm. what he was saying and so it's like for me I'm like okay I understand you want to be realistic but be realistic in your head you know like as your sort and she doesn't need to know every single thought especially if it's gonna impact her this way wait until you like maybe come to some type of I don't I don't know it just if you see that it's affecting your partner I didn't like how mm -hmm. he was so rigid about it the entire episode because coming around and saying okay well I won't change my um well we'll change the name of it isn't maybe it works for her but he was very rigid he wasn't trying to see like hey this hurts my feelings so 
stop saying it. <laughs> and there was a little bit of double speak. I feel like maybe I'm reading into this too much, but he said when they were sitting down with Pastor Kyle that he in the past always didn't communicate if he was checked out or if he wasn't happy with things. It was just kind of a like, oh, I'm out. So all of a sudden with Lindy, you're over expressing and saying a lot you know, oh, I don't know. And, but in your past, supposedly it's been the, co- the complete opposite of like, he's not even checked out now when he's saying too much. So <laughs> I don't really understand, but um, yeah. that's all I had on them. I hope, I mean, sure. I'm sure they'll figure it out. But yeah. Nothing much on them. Um, I feel like Miguel could go either, either way. I can't really, really read him. And I feel like at the end, you know how they take that extra day where they're like, oh, I'm still deciding. Some couples, you know what their decision is going to be or what their decision should be. I feel Mm -hmm. like it's going to be one of those who like tries to make her sweat. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. I I could see him. I mean, he is into playing games. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So next we have, do you want to do Morgan and Ben or Sasha and Nate? (laughs) Let's do Morgan and Ben. Okay. All right. The first thing I wrote down was when she's like, oh, yeah, use the bathroom and didn't flush. And he goes, oh, but it was only a pee. (laughs) If you don't flush, will you use the restroom? So I wrote that down. But other than that, he was out here dropping tips about how we could save our coins. (laughs) I was like, let me get out my little notepad (laughs) and write down when to wash my clothes and when not. Went to unplug the air fryer. <laughs> you you know, I don't mind him being a penny pitcher, no. pincher if um he's going to at least help her to acclimate to doing these things. Like, don't get in your feelings <laughs> if she's not on her own. Sorry. He cut off he cut off the lights in the bathroom when she was in the shower. I was like, whoa, this is extra. It was already extreme. Now it's, it's triple extreme. <laughs> it's like those, you know, your parents maybe growing up complaining, oh, you're leaving this on, you're leaving that yeah. on. It's like, this literally is like 50 cents. But listen, just do it. Don't complain about it. Just do it. I'm I'm like that with uh, with lights. <laughs> like mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I had a, a family member visiting once and like every room they would be in, they would put the lights on, leave the room mm-hmm. and leave the lights on. And so it was crazy if they were like looking for something because then the whole house would be lit. <laughs> and so <laughs> I remember one day I literally like, as they would leave one room, I would just like slide into the room, cut the light <laughs> off, slide into the next room. like, eh, And it went off for a little bit, you know? <laughs> but I'm like, clearly this ain't gonna work. Mm-mm. Just saying to you, hey, can you cut the lights off? So let me take action yeah but, um so <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to see them laughing together like even before pastor cow came because mm-hmm. of how last week went um when they did the house visits and he said how many watts when she showed him the um espresso machine i was like dang really been um bam other than him being cheap mm-hmm. uh, i think the pastor Cal visit for me was a really, really good one. Oh yeah. And Morgan needed to be got together because I don't know. So I'm just going to circle back on this whole degree thing and I'm, I'm tired of it. I really am. But um, the way that she explained it was he assumed that because I still needed one more class left that I wasn't an actual registered nurse when By now, we all know, okay, you can have an associate's degree and still be a registered nurse, but you wouldn't have a BSN. Mm -hmm. But I think where there may have been some untruth is, I think on the questionnaire, if they ask, what's your highest level of education? If she said bachelor's degree, then technically that wasn't true. So all of that being said, um, I don't know. I I get that she's still feeling a way or she was Mm -hmm. that Ben went and spoke with um, Justin. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, girl, if you went into marriage really Mm open-minded, is this going to be the thing that makes you put your walls that high up? Okay. So two things. One, it has only been like two days since everything happened. 
Mm, and this is a new situation. True. Yes, this is okay. a new situation. Does she need to get, I don't want to say get over it, but kind of like you can't yeah. hold on to things. You kind of have to approach each new day from a new perspective. But if it's only been two days, I can understand why we're still talking about it. But before we continue with Morgan and Ben, because we got this um, comment in our DMs and Instagram, I just mm. want to quickly address with like Lindy and Miguel um, that we weren't suggesting um, necessarily that Miguel was forcing her in some type of like, um, mm -hmm. like aggressive way. It seemed to us more like Lindy making that decision just based on where he was. So I just um, want to make sure like we put that out there because one of our faithful watchers mm -hmm. was like, hey, like I don't want to be unfair to Lindy and Miguel, um, mm -hmm. mostly Miguel, because then that's suggesting that he in some way is forcing things or trying to manipulate his way into that. And um, that at least wasn't our opinion. So I just wanted to yeah. say that because that's how I was like, oh, I didn't, because we weren't thinking that way, we didn't realize it came off that way. So I was like, I'll yeah. address it in the next review. And so I should have done that when we're talking about them, but I didn't. But yeah, and I think we said, like, we clearly think that Lindy did it of her own want and volition. Yeah, yeah, she did. She did. Yeah. Um, okay, but yes, yeah, to Morgan and Ben, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I do think it's only been a couple of days, but yes, yeah, she does need to um, relax. I can understand, especially with her history, while it's taking her a little bit longer. And again, this is a stranger. And it happened really early on <laughs> in their relationship. I'd agree as well. So, you know, maybe it doesn't take as much given her past, but I would also factor in just Ben's willingness to apologize yeah. and be like, hey, it's on me. Love he, that about him. Yeah, he hasn't even mentioned any accountability that maybe needed to be taken on her part mm -hmm. or maybe yeah. putting the different degree level than what was actually <laughs> true on there. You know, so I would say because he's, apologize so much she's told her like hey I'm all in I think that should kind of help her to be like okay he's remorseful yeah. and even the energy that he's given like he's not like standing 10 toes down like no I went and talked to my boy which some people will do they feel like they have the right to tell their friends what's yeah. going on with their relationship so I can see that um I do think from what we've heard of her past Mm -hmm. I do appreciate that he's trying to reassure her that he's there and that he's trying to improve things. I think if they last in the long run, that will be something that she comes to appreciate mm -hmm. about him uh, because that that is important, like not passing any blame on her, like just kind of accepting, hey, this just is my part. I'm mm -hmm. trying to make it right. How can I make it right? So it's like the remorse and then also the action behind it. So I, I appreciate that about Mama's boy, Ben. I do. They, yeah. They're calling him bargain Ben on um, Twitter. <laughs> I, I do hope, um, which I don't get this vibe, but I don't want her to harp on it too much because they have a journey ahead. And I don't want either one of them to get burnt out. Him from apologizing, apologizing, apologizing. And then her too, you know, like throwing in the towel and girl, you still have seven more weeks left at a minimum yeah. to get through this. So, yeah. Uh, so I, like I said, I enjoyed the Pastor Cal visit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing I wrote down because she was clearly like in her scrub. So I was like, oh, well, look at Morgan coming home from work and interacting with people. <laughs> okay. Look. She thought she wouldn't be able to do it. And now look at her doing it. But um, mm -hmm. Pastor Cal said, something about uh, like the with the walls so mm -hmm. one he highlighted Ben's remorse and then he talked about her like not creating the walls and then when she talked about having those up he's like okay but who created the walls and she had to take accountability and he's like so who can bring those walls down so mm -hmm. um, I, it just it really made sense it's one of those like simple nuggets that's like okay mm -hmm. if, if you want to bring these walls down they like, can come down especially if you see how remorseful he is you know mm -hmm. like, give it a shot so I appreciated his visit for them they needed that he was he, he did what needed to be done he earned his he earned his check yeah and it kind of reminds me their situation a little bit of like Michael and Jasmina how once they had that spat on the honeymoon <laughs> it was I mean 
it was a wrap. She was checked out and he was. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I it, think it, Ben is trying a little bit more than Michael. Michael was oh, yeah, Michael, of the accusation yeah. of him being <laughs> aggressive, understandably so. <laughs> yeah, he was like, no, no coming back after that. Okay, because no. he's like, I got to protect my character. I got to protect my image, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, that's all that I have on them. Just yeah, after. and I hope that they can be more physical, get more intimate. Pastor Kyle did ch- touch on that. Um I'd imagine like at this point he's just trying to like take her lead, you know. Yeah, he's being he's very um like goofy almost. <laughs> yeah, he is very jovial. Yeah. Um, very lighthearted. <laughs> but you know what he ain't joking about? <laughs> Them kids and family. Oh, that electricity. <laughs> oh, and that electricity too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. So that's it for them. I'm gonna go Sasha and Nate next. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> you know what, what's funny about this couple? Sasha, when she went to his place, was very aware, based on what she said to the diary cam, um, that he really wanted to impress her after seeing her place so she's like oh you know I know that he's really nervous and he's really trying to impress me and so when she said that to the cameras I was like okay so she's gonna try to like accommodate differences here and she's gonna take it easy on him she did the complete opposite she was like uh (laughs) she (laughs) she said she was a lot to handle and is Okay. <laughs> and this was just, I think, the tip of the iceberg. Okay. I think it was wrapped in a lot of smiles and cutesiness, yeah. laughs, but, yeah. you know, those layers are coming back. His place wasn't, it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't a, a hot, listen, we, <laughs> especially in comparison to some of the others. Yeah. No, <laughs> his place... It wasn't bad at all. It gave Bachelor, you know. Yeah, exactly. We wouldn't necessity. have known it was dirty unless she did what she did. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So no, no I, I'd agree. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> I think that he's very willing to make her happy. Like, I think he's getting the vibe that she can be a lot, but he's like, oh, well, you know, I can take my shoes off, which everybody should be taking their shoes off. But she house. didn't take her shoes off when she got in. I noticed bed. that. Yeah, probably because she was like, can you mop these floors? No. <laughs> <laughs> he don't care. He don't care. But um, yeah, so I think he, he seems to be very open to being like, oh, okay, well, I can do that. I can, oh, I'm coming from the gym. I'll make sure I try and shower. You know, he's being kind of cool and laid back um with some of the things that she's bringing up Mm -hmm. because I do think that he does really want to make it work and impress her um but I think that will be interesting once they if they make it past the eight weeks and they're like in her place quote unquote because they're in a neutral zone now okay we tour my place we tour your place we're in the neutral zone at the apartment yeah but then what does it look like when you're beyond that and you're in quote unquote her house. She's gonna have to give him a man cave because there's no way for him to be comfortable with all her extraness. But mm-hmm. if she's willing to like maintain like maintain the clean cleanliness, I think I don't know. I mean so hopefully she has a housekeeper. I mean mm-hmm. they should be she, yeah. She can afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely I mean, afford it. So. at least once a month. Yeah. Um, um her place is very nice mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful what we expected yeah so exactly. put together exactly uh so I think that's impressive side note mm-hmm. why do men all men have this reaction to decorative pillows <laughs> it's like they don't come why do you need all these pillows it's like they don't comprehend it's for decor decoration the vibe <laughs> that is so funny but also it 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 is a lot <laughs> I'm, I'm not the <laughs> Okay, I'm a decorative pillow person in like my living room. Like if you're going to sit on my, you have to move pillows. Mm-hmm. But the room, not so much. Uh, but yeah, it is funny that they're all like, like you, you ain't never seen this show before. <laughs> Everybody goes through this where the woman got too many pillows. 
yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, her place was nice. Um, mm-hmm. They talked about the what was it? It wasn't an espresso machine, or she went. To oh her- yeah, that whole conversation was strange because I'm like, okay, Sasha girl, you making the kind of money you making? <laughs> it's a coffee machine. What? Is- okay. I I was thinking like Nate, come on, because it was it did seem like it was cheaper as long as she stops going to the coffee shops when she has an espresso I didn't think it was a big deal like yeah they serve two different purposes I, I didn't understand oh, really that. I don't, yeah, I don't drink like, coffee so I don't, I don't know yeah like if you one if you're home working from home but like if you're out on the go like some people have two cups a day like when they first wake up in the morning and then maybe at work or they stop in you know that's why I say like, oh, you still would need a coffee maker at home. And her Keurig did look kind of old. So, so wait, um, an espresso doesn't do the same thing that like Starbucks does? No, but like if you're out and about, you're not going to go home to get coffee. Oh, no, you fix your coffee in the morning and take it with you in your mug. Right. Well, yeah, but some people, they, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to stop to get the newest Starbucks drink on the way to work. Or uh-huh. like, it's not going to replicate that the new, Um, you know, like pumpkin spice latte. I mean, you could try to make it, but if you're working from home that day or if it's the weekend, yeah, you have your coffee maker at home. But if you're like at work and it's 2 p.m. and you're like, oh, I want a cup of coffee. You're just going to go to Starbucks. You're not going to go all the way back home. So she'll probably still do both. Child, I don't speak coffee. Sorry, y'all. She has to (laughs) go back to me because I'm like, it's crazy. Also, I... I'm a penny pincher a little bit. So I would be like, you better make two cups. And then like, <laughs> you know, those thermals that keep your drink warm, you better pack oh, one which you can keep it for two o'clock. But um, so, yeah, so I do have like three coffee makers at my house. I have an espresso, a regular coffee machine and a Keurig. Don't ask why. <laughs> <laughs> what does a Keurig do that a regular cup? Co- or what does? So a Keurig is like one cup, you know? And no, they I have don't. the different pods, <laughs> right? And then Nespresso is espresso. It's a different type of coffee. Um, and then uh, a regular coffee pot is like, oh, we're having a party or we have guests over. So you'd brew an entire pot of coffee. So yeah, it's definitely over the top. Um, one of them was gifted. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have, you know, different coffee for different needs. So. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, so I do want to address this thing. So um Stasha, I can't remember if this was before or after the Pastor Cal conversation. It might have been after. So let's talk about Pastor Cal first. So he comes in and he um has the money conversation with them, like, okay, how much do you make? And Nate shares that he makes 150, which on is more than I thought. And I think for where he is more than I thought he made <laughs> really in California um based on Nate's past of selling fake Louis Vuitton like he just recovered so I'm like okay <laughs> that okay. is yeah okay I don't know why I was expecting I think I was expecting okay maybe like a, a hundred maybe even less I was just expecting the worst. Really? I, okay. Mm. We just have one fifty for what he does and yeah. the amount of time. I'm like, oh, the amount of time and, that he's been doing. And for where he lives, I mean, once I saw his apartment, I'm like, okay, for yeah. Southern California, like you'd need to be at at least that. He probably yeah. doesn't have student. Did he go to? College? I don't know if he did like the whole college thing. So. He but he has not. the debt from the business that he had to file bankruptcy on, it seems like, or I don't know. Oh, oh I missed that. Okay, well, I don't know, but I was just prepared for worse. <laughs> and so... You ain't got faith in your boy, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know. But uh, she clearly makes way more than he does, and she's mm-hmm. good. Um, so he seems to be okay with it he's like I'm fine with it (laughs) well he was fine with it until the whole kids thing Mm -hmm. and um I understand what Pastor Kyle was saying like hey you know you're already 34 she's 37 like if things are good like why wait Mm -hmm. like you don't need to make a certain amount to pull the trigger you could still provide for your family especially since she has a higher 
income, but I also understood Nate's point of view um, in that, I mean, you live in one of the most expensive places in the country. And um, even if your wife is able to contribute, I think even if it's for a period of time while she's on maternity leave or she's pregnant, like it seems like he was thinking like, okay, during that time, I don't want to just make the assumption that she's going to want to go back hard work, you know, hard hitting the pavement as soon as she has her baby. Like if she decides, which some women do, they get to that point and they're like, hey, I just want more time with my baby. So he wants to be able to give her that time. So I understood what he was saying. Like, yeah, what's about the 250, but it's about maybe creating the space for her to have the experience that he feels like she could have during that time. But it also Um, seems like Sasha is trying to set her life up so that she doesn't need him to provide that experience so like with her well, like they're, property they're so early on so he wouldn't know yeah mm-hmm. but uh, I, I think that could have been a conversation that they would have had um but yeah I, I understand you know he wants to make sure that he's secure mm-hmm. and he's like envisioned his life a certain way um hopefully he considers like just her age and what she wants um at this point at this stage in her life Um, yeah yeah so I think it's understandable on both sides she's like we're good I'm ready to pull the trigger and he's like "Eh." (laughs) (laughs) and he mentioned change in lifestyle so that piece he kind of barely mentioned but I think it's a bigger deal than maybe what he's saying Mm -hmm. you know if you're used to living not just a single life but freedom and flexibility of not having a child it is a significant lifestyle change but if y'all got this money and you feel comfortable bringing in a nanny yeah maybe it isn't this huge lifestyle change now that you're paired with someone who has you know her finances are pretty strong Mm -hmm. to support it so yeah the part that I did not like and the part that I wanted to get to was at the end when she was trying to tell him to be more vulnerable and he's like oh I didn't even know I wasn't being vulnerable (laughs) um which was kind of funny but um when she's like oh you don't talk about your mom at all and she's like well I have the same situation with my dad she kept stressing that it's the same thing it's the same thing and similarity does not equal sameness so yes you have an issue with your dad or you've had um a complicated relationship with your dad and he has a complicated relationship with his mom but I think what he was trying to stress to her is that you have emotions tied to your situation that I do not have I don't know if he doesn't have them or if he just hasn't uncovered them but I think she should have respected the difference in that moment so I'm a person where if I'm trying to show you the difference in something or the similarity in something and you're trying to show me the opposite that would frustrate me like Mm -hmm. stop saying your situation is the same as mine it clearly is not Mm -hmm. and yeah there's a similarity in that we have an issue with the parent but stop trying to tell me what my situation is how I should feel about it or how I should express how I feel about it when maybe I'm just not there yet so she has to be patient with him maybe that's not the thing that he's ready to be vulnerable with try something else yeah and I was so surprised that that was the one thing that she wanted him to be more vulnerable on I don't know if it's because she wanted to kind of bond in a way with him like oh I have this situation with my parent you have with your parents so this is a common thing that we can like bond over but there are a lot of other things at day two or three of being back at home that y'all could be being vulnerable about um, that I think could set you up for more success in the future. Because I was thinking like, okay, what exactly are you wanting for him to say in regards to the mom? Like he explained to you what the situation was. She wasn't there. I saw her one time in my life (laughs) and that was that, like literally that was that. Uh, So I think maybe when she's having these conversations about her dad, maybe there's more history with them yeah. interacting. So I could see like them having a conversation and maybe he's just like, oh, okay, okay. And then he doesn't respond with anything about his mom because there just isn't really much to say. And so I don't know, I, I was just like, okay, Sasha, there are other things that 
he could be more vulnerable on like the whole kids thing and the the concerns that he may have about lifestyle. Like that's where he needs to be more vulnerable uh, on, you know, if this baby is like higher priority for you right now. Yes, exactly. So yeah, I, I just didn't like that. She was trying, um, trying to push it because like, if you've been around people who like siblings, right. Who have the same parent and the same complications with that parent, even they will process things differently. So mm -hmm. it's like, if that's the case with people who have the same situation, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, it, it, it can't be, it can't be as alike as she's trying to make it seem. I just want her to see that. Like, I think we're all human and there are going to be flaws in all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like that particular moment. And I wish that she would have been more um, understanding. You know, I do wonder, and maybe I'm reaching, you tell me, mm -hmm. but is her concern about him being vulnerable and showing feelings about his mom? Is that coming from a place of... Um, concern about the care and concern he would have for her so you know how people will say like oh you, you learn him. yeah you know learn a lot about a man based off how he treats and feel about, feels about his mom so is it this fear that okay this is the woman who brought you into this world and some people believe no matter what they do you should have some emotion and feeling about them or the situation mm -hmm. so then what about me as an outsider coming in and we don't have any history hmm. Like, what does this mean for me? Yeah. I do wonder if that's driving some of her concern about him not being vulnerable. Like, oh, well, if you can't find the feelings for your mom, where are you going to find the feelings for me? Yeah. Interesting. I didn't think it, I didn't think of it that way. I did think it was just one of the things that she really wants to bond over. And he's just like, ain't nothing to mm -hmm. bond except the fact that we don't have a great, <laughs> like we don't have a relationship. What did he say? I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like sometimes it's just not that deep. Um, mm -hmm. But even if it is that deep, he clearly isn't in the place where he's ready to uncover that. So I think she really just needs to, you know, maybe when they go to, to a therapy session, <laughs> like she suggested, you know, some of those things might be unearthed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. That's all that I had on them. Yeah, that's all that I had. Um, I will say when Pastor Kyle asked about intimacy and they were like, oh, we found other ways or whatever, whatever. I know some comments on some other pe videos, people think that they're lying about if they did no. the do. Um, it wouldn't time. be unique to them. Other couples have. Yeah. So I could see it. Hmm? Yeah. All hmm? right. Let's go ahead and talk about Kristen and Mitch. Mostly I want to talk about Mitch in this dirty apartment because he knew he was going on a honeymoon. He knew that his wife would have to come back to his place as a part of the process. And he didn't even like try to clean. And he wasn't even a sh bring back shame because he wasn't even ashamed <laughs> that his apartment this, was finished. This is, he did it in true Mitch fashion. He don't care. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. tub is dirty too. It's because I do my plants in there though. Oh uh, yeah, my, my stove is filthy. What's the excuse for that? Like It's nasty. And then the fact that by the end of the episode, she was like, <laughs> you know, if we start things tonight, I, I, I might let things go all the way. I was like, girl, you saw his apartment? Ava. Girl, what he what he washing that body with? All right, no washcloth. I'm gonna have to monitor his shower. <laughs> Better check those feet. That was disgusting. Like you are a 41 year old man. I understand not being like the tidiest person, but you knew camera crews were coming in your house. You didn't even try to. You could have mm -hmm. hired some. Well, I guess he couldn't have because they talked about the money situation. So maybe he couldn't have hired somebody, but still. Well, uh, he did butter her up in the beginning, giving compliments, saying that he's thankful for her. I know. Who saw that coming? I know. So I'm like, okay, they're very touchy feely. Yeah. The the chemistry looks like it's there, and this is even before they were intimate. In the beginning of the um, episode, one thing that Kristen said where I was just like, hmm, I don't know about this, but she <laughs> said she was enjoying that they've had a rocky road 
so far and that she feels like she wouldn't have been as happy if it were more simple. She just be talking. Why? She just be talking. She don't know. Girl. So you want to struggle love. That's what she wants badly. That's why she went and, and got engaged to that man who was living on someone else's couch. It just wouldn't be as interesting. Right. Um, but yeah, I did I did write that down. Like um, I am glad for her that things seem to be a little bit better. I don't know, based on the clip that I saw from the after party, if they would still be together because- um, The way she answered the question about the, how the intimacy went, I would be shocked if they still were and that was her husband and she said that. For those who haven't seen it, I don't know if this was on the after party, but Keisha Knight Pulliam, who is the um, host of the after party, posted in, uh, a clip. And in the clip, she had asked Kristen, like, okay, so you guys consummated, and how was that? And Kristen took a really long time to start answering, so much so that, like, Keisha was like, okay, well, let's, let's drink our drinks, and then maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. And so they drank the drinks, and then afterwards, she says, I think we have time to make sure things last a little longer <laughs> like that she they they can't be married you would not Kristen would not embarrass her husband like that like if this were somebody else who didn't care about image or didn't understand like we saw how Kristen protected their marriage even talking to the girls last week mm-hmm. that is not something she would say on national tv if they were still together it's just not messy messy Mm, mm, mm. they're not together um Mm, mm, mm. i put down luda be breathing so heavy and it was so (laughs) what's funny was like mitch was like i would just stay by the door i want no parts of that the way he was looking at that dog i would have been the same way Uh, that alone would have me i just started liking you Kristen. so this is a lot (laughs) like mm, mm, like, mm. maybe i shouldn't like her as much as um i did but yeah she she apparently is appreciative she forgot how filthy he is because they're and uh so much so that she was giving gifts and uh coupons yep i will say so i feel like Kristen. um between her compliments and forwardness, I feel like she knows how to get what she wants. Which I'm not gonna, what? Hmm? Which is what? Like, what does she want? I don't know. Like, <laughs> she almost kind of like butters you up. Like, oh, you're so this or that. She's been hot in the pants for this man for the last few episodes. Yeah, um, and she all but said like, you're gonna this coupon was like oh you're gonna give it to me or else or what <laughs> <laughs> it expires tonight oh Kristen said I get what I want I feel and like she he wanted it too oh no 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 of course he wanted it but I mean she said multiple times like hey I'm ready when you are even given like their whole situation so she did pull back when and you know he was trying to do it when he was maybe drunk or whatever but other than that she has been letting him know, like, hey, I'm ready. Hey, I'm ready. And the coupon said, hey, it's going to be tonight. Yeah. Child. Apparently, it wasn't enjoyable. But, um, child, after all of that. <laughs> all right. Alexis and Justin. Mm-mm-mm. So, I guess Ooh. let's start with his place. She's like, we're in the living kitchen bedroom. <laughs> like, such a small space for a big man yeah uh she said and you're on the flight path how do you sit out here he's like do people complain no justin is very um he's someone who's very content with very little and i think that's a positive thing uh but yeah it seems like he he doesn't need a lot like he doesn't require a lot except for managing his feelings uh, but yeah. other than that he seems to be a pretty like go with the flow yeah, yeah exactly very positive don't want to focus too much on the negative like yeah yeah I clearly see these jets flying over but it's yeah no big deal you know yeah get to it 
and he doesn't contribute to the negative too which is something that we saw in this episode so they yeah. bring the dog and um man this is this one was hard because I really felt for both of them first like Alexis was offended when he referred to Newton Newton New, Newton <laughs> um <laughs> as a dog so I was like okay she's a little bit extra she she literally thinks this dog that's her baby her child yeah and so I'm not like a, a pet person but even I can see the attachment right mm -hmm. so that's her baby so they bring the kids into uh, the house together and she's gone for a second which I think contributed to things she wasn't there to protect and she does see herself as the protector of her baby and it happened so fast or at least the camera the part that was shown on camera happened so fast and his reaction was like oh you know like nothing happened it was fine it was nothing that happened i'm trying to downplay it which i think seems to be a little bit natural for him to react because that's kind of his child and so he might want to downplay i don't know it was just it was a sad situation uh, little newton almost lost his eye i know that was crazy um so i'd agree that both of them should have came up with a better game plan to integrate all these animals i mean i don't know why y'all thought it was a good idea to just bring them all in an unfamiliar place mm -hmm. let one of the dogs off the leash so like both of y'all should could have come up with a better plan why it's, was why was the little dog off the leash <laughs> i think because um she won knows that her dog isn't like an alpha dog. And then two, because I think she took him to word when he said like, yeah, Maya can kind of be an alpha dog, but she's never attacked dogs like that. So she's probably thinking like, oh, okay. Like the likelihood of something like that happening is low. I think she got comfortable um, knowing like, oh, my dog isn't going to do anything. And if he said that like, oh, they maybe have a little tiff, but not like I'm about to take your eye out. Yeah, I thought she That's said her saying. dog is an alpha dog. There were two oh, dogs she did? that were alphas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, well, Newton wasn't that. acting like one. <laughs> <laughs> um and plus that dog, you know, Maya's a bigger dog. So uh I will say though that um when they first were came into the apartment, um uh, from what I know about dogs, they kind of tell you. And when Maya showed her canine teeth, mm -hmm. that should have showed both of y'all that this is not gonna, like she was growling. We could hear her. She wasn't mic'd up. She growled <laughs> several times. Yeah. Letting y'all know, like, get this dog out of my face. Get this dog out of my face. I feel like the dog tried to tell them I don't even blame the dog. Uh, so I felt bad when they sent her to training camp or doggy prison out there in the desert. And as hot as I don't know what out there. But I, someone on Twitter was like, dang, <laughs> they sent Maya to Rikers Island. And I'm like, people on Twitter would make fun of anything because why are you making me laugh at this situation right now? I felt bad. Like, did that look like any kind of fun camp? I felt so bad for that dog. I felt bad for, I felt bad for the dog because like you said, they did bring her to very unfamiliar, like, and now you expect me to be like, oh yeah, that's my sister or brother or whatever New Newton is, a, a, I guess a, a man. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you expect me to be like, oh yeah, dapping it up, that's my boy, <laughs> you know? Like, mm -mm. You can't you can't do that. But, um, and so uh, Justin did say, like, mm, I'm a little worried. Like, he expressed concerns yeah. earlier on. Like, mm, it was vague. So I understood what Alexis was saying. Like, he kind of alluded to it, but it was kind of vague. Um, even with how he handled it and was like, oh, it was just a little tiff. I will say if it, if it were my dog who got attacked and you know your dog did it, I would say, okay, create your dog let's like inspect my dog you know like to make sure like everything is good but he was just kind of like oh she looks good or he looks good <laughs> like barely looked <laughs> yeah I 
so let's talk about kind of how they handled it. Obviously, um, Alexis did what any good dog owner would do and like calling around to see who has what and who's available to take care of Newton that night. Um, I think she even handled him as best as she could. Oh, she handled it great. Especially when she's like, I'm going to close the door and get changed. And we overheard them talking. And um, I do think he was very remorseful. I think because it happened so fast, maybe he didn't see what had happened. So he really thought nothing happened. and was just like, oh, it was just a thing. Especially because he still had her on the leash and probably pulled her back. So I think maybe he really thought nothing happened and might have been shocked that that is what happened. <laughs> so I don't know. It seemed to have happened fast is all I'm saying. But um, I did appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciated uh, his remorse. So when they closed the door, we heard him say like, I'm really sorry. I will come with you. He had put his dog up. He's like, I will come with you. Um, he accepted responsibility, it seemed um, to me. Mm-hmm. And I think taking his dog to the Rikers Island of, of like pets, <laughs> I think he takes this very seriously as a dog owner, but also as a husband, like I can't have this situation. And so I understood what he was saying when it's like, when she's like, oh, I thought that decision was already made. Like, yeah, but he's trying to hold out hope that we don't have to go that far because that's going to be really hard for him. Yeah, I I don't agree with like the camp they sent the dog to. I'm like, okay, y'all couldn't have found something that looked better than this, but okay. (laughs) Um, But I will say though, Yes, it's hard, but if you have a dog who's like that, it needs to be done. Some type of behavioral training camp type of thing, because even if it's not her dog, if you're out in public, um, kids, even myself, I don't feel the most comfortable being in a house with dogs who are aggressive like that. Um, But from what he said, Maya hasn't shown him, like when Pastor Cal came and he's like, Maya has reacted to other dogs provoking her, but it's not a common thing. Like, so it, it didn't seem like he, like he said, I, uh, I overestimated my dog. I think yeah. that, that was genuine. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, he, yeah. and there was no way he could fully predict it. But what I'll say is now that it's happened. Yeah, I think he did the right thing. Yeah, you have to do something about that. Yeah, for if, sure. if the dog is unpredictable, um, and I will just say this: every dog owner, most dog owners, feels like feel like their dogs don't bite. They're this, they're, <laughs> oh <know>. yeah, <laughs> like, oh, he just wants to play with you. I don't want to play with him. <laughs> yeah. They always like will downplay yeah. it, and then it's like, well, who are all these dogs that are biting people then? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I will say when you know where they sitting with pastor Kyle and you know he starts crying oh wait before that Mm. because he started crying when they were in the room and they locked the doors Mm. which (laughs) she was like Justin I can't right now (laughs) (laughs) I was like like we who said it was it you or the info I was like she gonna get sick of this crying (laughs) especially in a moment like that where I get that emotions are high, but her dog was the one that was attacked. This dog clearly needs medical attention. Like, right, like you got to stay focused. Now is not the time to be crying. You're wasting time. Yes. My so, because uh, I need to get dressed and get in the car and leave. Yeah. Yeah. But I did understand him crying with past. I think if there were any time for him to cry, it was having to drive Maya and that conversation with Pastor Cal. I think really? if, he hadn't, if he hadn't been crying all these weeks, we would have completely understood. Like you, I could, agree. you could see his remorse. You could see how he's like, I let this happen. I'm responsible. Like you could see all of that on his shoulders in that conversation with Pastor Cal. I agree. That coupled with him crying every episode almost before. Yeah, yeah it, it makes you... <laughs> 
maybe question just a little bit like you know like some people they cry to be manipulative I don't think that that's him I think that that's not him but there are people who do that where they find themselves in certain situations like yeah they always cry but they know when you show emotion it kind of deflects from the task at hand the conversation at hand I don't think that that's him though Um, but I think because he is easy to cry in situations that maybe aren't as big of a deal, um, so we think, um, or I think, then it kind of makes you like, hmm, okay, yeah, is this genuine? Like, is this just a distraction? And I will say Alexis handled herself very well and calmly because I know a lot of people would be like, you're crying. My what dog is crying for? Yeah, what you crying? Why those should be tears? crying. <laughs> I'm going to give you something to cry about. <laughs> like used to say. I, like, I forget how Pastor Cal put it, but I think he said you're very empathetic and you feel things deeply. Mm. And I do think that accurately describes yeah. Justin. Yeah. Right and when he was talking about giving away his dog or rehoming his dog, I don't think he was reneging. Even no, no, no. I think that's what she was hearing. Like, wait, we, we already talked yeah. about this. I think it was just, this is going to be very difficult. I if this, want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, if, if this is the route that I have to take and it's like okay I'm gaining this beautiful situation but then I'm having to give my dog away who's been there with me this entire time yeah because he says had her sense of puppy I think yeah that's a Maya you better get your act together girl right and I I I like that she said what she needed from him which I can't remember but he was (laughs) like I I would like you to give me another chance with Maya like I'm going to try like now I know I think he knows better and wants to do better and so I appreciated him asking for that second chance and I feel like Maya just needs like a yard to like run she's a big dog like don't keep her all cooped up Mm. with it she already got this other little animal (laughs) yeah the cat too that's another thing all these animals I, I can't I can't do one so hats off to them honestly especially right. being in an apartment you can't just like let them out you gotta like go downstairs and da, da, da. Yep. Uh, anyways yeah that that's it for this episode let us know what you guys think it was a very sad situation with Alexis and Justin um but let us know what you guys think about all of the couples mm-hmm. and we will catch you guys next week bye bye, bye.